Once again, we are home, and I'm attempting to do the show, and uh, anyway, next show will be, we're going to try Zooming with uh, some of the high drama gang. In the meantime, Lucille Lortel Awards are going to be on May 3rd, virtually, and these are the people I interviewed on the 2019 last year. Okay, rip it away, Alfie. We're going to do this crazy, but I can't stop the camera. All right, click. Click on the first one. There we go. Are you ready? Milligan. And congratulations on Featured Actors out of Critics Circle. Thank you so much. That category is the one where I want everyone to win in that. Yeah. Oh, you must be just like pinching yourself. Oh, for sure. I think it was such an amazing year for women, especially in musicals. So I was so floored and so honored to be included in such a list of unbelievable artists. And head over here such a wonderful message. It was like yeah. so inclusive. Yeah, it was really special with so many different messages, but just of love and acceptance and, uh, you know, body positivity and so many wonderful things. I was so happy to be a part of this season. I think it was something really important, um, a message of love to have in the times right now. And so what's your next thing that you're doing? Um, I just filmed on a pilot, a Teresa Rebeck pilot. Hopefully we'll get picked up and we'll see we'll see what happens. Otherwise lots of development on musicals and we'll see what happens next. And you're presenting here. Um, yes, I'm presenting for um, uh, costume design and scenic design. Mm -hmm. Two of my favorite categories, fashion. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations and good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, next. I love your beans. Oh, and I love your outfit. Hello. Are you ready? Here we are with Paloma Young. Oh my God, I love your costume. Ever since Rachel and and, and Natasha and yeah, yeah. Oh wow. And the 18th Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We see your name, and I know I'm like. Oh, your costumes are gorgeous. Where do you? How do you get these inspirations? Because they're just stunning. Um, well, I have a great support network um, of uh, a lot of incredible young artists that come and join me for stuff like to happen with Alice by Heart. We had some like amazing interns that helped make all of these crazy things by hand, um, including wings made out of old uh, Alice in Wonderland books. Um, so, like, the, I guess I would say, like, my costumes come from having, like, a network of incredible young artists around me, um, or artists of all ages. Um, well, the Caterpillar, your idea, that was just genius. I love the Caterpillar. Uh, yeah, the Caterpillar was my idea. I mean, it was my idea in that, like, uh, Jesse, the director, came and, and uh, you know, we were interested in creating this world that came from the imagination of these um, these young people in the, the tube. Um, and so, every in our mind, everything had to kind of uh, springboard from something that was already in the space. And so what would be in this bomb shelter? And we're like, well, we would have, um, uh, like, rations and supplies. And I was like, well, the caterpillar is sort of like, it's all about indulgence and... Um, and it's, it's a little, it's the caterpillar has the munchies, like it's very druggy. And I was like, so we're going to take the food and we're just going to explode it. Like it's as if the rations were on drugs and then repeat it a thousand times. And it's like, how can we turn a box of, um, uh, box of pork and beans into something sexy? <laughs> I know, everyone loves the caterpillar with everyone's favorite character. Uh, yeah, I love the Caterpillar, and Heath is nominated, which is so great. I mean, he brings a lot to that costume that I didn't have to do any work. So what's, what are you do, working on now? Um, well, I'm working on another show at MCC, uh, which we call Moscow Time Six. Um, and that is also a very fun, crazy design. Uh, it's back to the Russians again. Yeah, exactly, the Russians. Um, they go to you. Yeah, I, I love a good Russian t story. Um, and, uh... And I'm doing a show in the UK, um, which is a a pop music, uh, a jukebox musical, The Songs of Max Martin. It's like uh, called And Juliet. So that'll be like really fun. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss my off Broadway friends. Well, we'll be waiting for you. <laughs> thank you very much, and, and congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Hi, how are you? Hello, congratulations. Here we are. Kate Hudson. Hi, Kate. 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 H
Kate Baldwin. I'm superhero, and all you got nominated was out of critics, Lortel, and the drama desk. No. <laughs> No, just the Lortel. Mm -hmm. I thought the other critics too. Yeah. What were we thinking? My, my bad, because really, Superhero was so good. Oh my gosh, I loved your character so much. It just, I'm a you know single mom too, so I really I to relate to. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the scene of the laundry room, it just, oh, it was just you and Bryce Pinker were just so wonderful. Thank you. It was a joy to work on, especially that laundry room scene. I think that was probably the only scene that didn't change one word since from our first preview to our opening night. Because they did a lot of changes, and that remained untouched, because it worked. And the music, it, I, how can you sing music that, that makes you choke up so, and be able to sing it in character? Because, I mean, in the audience, we're all like weeping and going crazy, and you have to stay in character and sing these songs that just, I'm sure, give you goose shiver. I mean, it's my job, so I have to figure out a way to do it. Uh, it's not always easy, and there were times when I couldn't get the next note out because, as you alluded to, the story is uh, very deeply uh, personally felt, especially by me as a mom. Um, so uh, I just figured it out as I as best I could. Thankfully, it was a short run. <laughs> I know, but we should be longer. And you just did uh, Hello, Dolly, where you got to be very lively in there. You've got, you, 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 it's much of all these different roles. So what are you doing next? Uh, I'm not at liberty to say. Ooh, that sounds, that sounds weird. It, will, it be in the, will it be in America or abroad? Oh, it'll be in the U.S., in the U.S., yeah. Oh, but I don't want to lose you. Okay, okay, you won't. I wonder if Brian Darcy James will be in that one, because you do a lot with him. I love him. I just saw him on Friday night. I went back to see The Ferryman, and he's... Excellent in it. Oh, he is. Yeah. I love Giant. Oh, good. Yes, me too. I love Giant as well. It's one of my favorite things I've ever done. Thank you very much. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hello. Hello. Uh, Charlie. Oh, you're here. I was uh, nominated for uh, Best Scenic Design of a Play for uh, The Shadow of a Gunman at the Irish Repertory Theater. Oh, wow. That was so good, what you did with that little space. It was like the way you had, like, like an entire building in a little tiny three-by-three. Three. Yes. Well, we tried to create sort of an environmental space so that when you walk into the door, um, into the auditorium, you're immediately immersed in 1920s Dublin. Um, and this show is part of a trilogy, so we go from... Uh, the Shadow of a Gunman to Juno and the Peacock to the Plow and the Stars, and they get more epic as they go along. Oh, it's the same set that you just add to? Is that it? It's partially the same set, but then we turn it out. I have a turntable built in for the last one, and so we go from uh, to four different locations that we haven't seen before. Wow, a turntable! Wow! I, uh, you must be very good scientifically, the bigger and mathematical and all. It's really about sort of trying to figure out how to put together a puzzle backstage. You know, I can always figure where the scenery is going to go, and then I have to figure out where the actors are going to be, where the props are going to be, all that. It's oh, that's very impressive. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, here we are with... Yes, I, uh, my name is Akko, and you got nominated for lead actor in the play, actress in the play, and the play is God Said This. And I just saw your daughter, the, the woman that played your daughter, she's playing another daughter in Fruiting Box. Yes, and Emma, uh, she's coming actually tonight to help, help us. <laughs> emotionally grueling role because you have, on top of having cancer, you have this hating his husband that you just want to punch in the nose. <laughs> it's not hated, but he has a problem <laughs> to deal with and by himself. So the, the mother, my, my role, uh, is patiently dealing with and trying to uh, make a harmony in the family. And uh, so, so two daughters, half Japanese, half Americans, they are also fighting for their identity and what is the family about. Um, it's just, it's just, uh, Leo Manako Winkler wrote such a beautiful play. And I hope some producers will pick up again and everybody can see it. Well, I think it'll do well regionally, I really do, because it's a, such an important play. Yes, I think so. And it's not, right now everyone, it's so, so many immigrant mother, immigrant father, and the children are, you know, it's a half, you know, and they, 
they are trying to find out their identity. It's, it's very difficult in this country right now. Yes, yes. So what's next for you? Uh, next one is uh, at MCC Theater. Uh, there, uh, Moscow, 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 Moscow by uh, Hadi Pfeiffer and directed by um, uh, 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 Tip, Tip Coleman. Yeah, you talked to Paloma Young who's doing your cast. Oh, yeah? Good. So you're you're going to be dressed very nicely for this. <laughs> no, I'm going to play Anfisa, like a 80 some years old uh, old lady. <laughs> And uh, it, you, you'll see it, it's so fun, so fun. Uh, the Halley wrote in, in uh, Three Sisters, based on Three Sisters. But it's actually, it's, uh, word to word is a check of words, but it's a very updated millennium girls talking. And it's so fun. Good. Chekhov should be funny, so I know, so it's being done properly. Yes. Actually, yes, exactly. It's um, and and the seagull as well. It's a, it's a comedy. They say, right? Yeah. And, and so I hope everybody can come too. I can't wait. Now I'm excited. Congratulations. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Are you ready? Hello. Here we are with Zainab Ja. And you were in Bosman and Lena. I was in Bosman and Lena. That was quite a different role than you had in Eclipse. Eclipse yes, I was a young African girl, and this one I'm an old African woman. And, and in the other one, you were more in charge, and here you're bored. You're trying to escape. Completely scrubbed down, and uh, you know, yes, knuckled down. And in um, Eclipse, I was, you know, I had an AK-47, so I was in charge to some extent, at least in my little mind. You could have used it on Bozeman. You know what? I wish, you have no idea how many times people said to me, I wish you had a gun to use it on it. <laughs> Violent people are. I know we are, but people just felt sorry for Lena. She was going through a lot. And I'm looking forward to Sarah. I hope he's here tonight because I haven't seen him since we, we closed. My husband and my brother. <laughs> so what's, what are you doing now? Next I'm going on holiday to Costa Rica, if, I, if anything, if I have anything to say about it. You deserve it. <laughs> and also, actually, I have a TV show that's running right now, Deep State, that I shot. It's a British production on epics called Deep State. It's basically like Homeland. It's very sort of, you know, sword and... No, it's not sword. It's like cloak and dagger, government, secrets, and sleazy underbelly. And um, it's running right now on epics called Deep State. I'm going to have to check it out now. Let's see it. I love seeing my theater folk on TV. I know. It's always fun, right? Something gratifying about it. Congrats, thank you. Hello. Hi, here we are with Clifton Duncan. And you were in Carmen Jones. Oh my gosh, you were Joe. Oh my god. Oh, you looked so different in Joe. You were like so like a, you know, seducible. Well, you know, I, I'm a transformational actor. I don't know if you you know this, but it's true. It's true. That was so beautifully done, and, and it was gorgeous to, to see. And Anika Noni Rose, wow, how could you resist her so long, my gosh? Um, I mean, Cindy Lou is fine, but really. Well, you, you don't know Anika in real life. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, no, well, you know, I, I had actually met Anika a few years uh, before during a workshop, and so um, when, I, uh, when John asked me to do it, I was pretty excited to work with her again. Uh, she, um, <laughs> she is someone who knows... Uh, how to work with what God gave her, so to speak. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, Joe, Joe's kind of a tough role because, you know, he spends a lot of the play sort of with things happening to him, and uh, he's kind of a puppy dog in some in some ways until he's not. And um, just remaining open to that and just having fun playing with uh, playing with Anika and her crazy behind. Uh, you know, it was a good it was a good experience. It was a lot of fun. You know, little... shows, shows what love can do to a person. Well, you know, that's what that's what that's what excited me so much about doing a story. You know, I read the original novel by by Prosper uh, Mary May, and uh, of course the the opera is a classic. And um, and I think that it's it's so true and it's so human as to as to who we are and who we who we like to uh, try to suppress what we like to, to suppress about ourselves, you know, because some of that stuff gets really ugly. And I think what people connected to about the show, and especially about Joe, is uh, 
you know, he's someone who's in love, or he thinks he's in love. And it's taken advantage of in some really horrible ways, and the way that that plays out, you know, is pretty tragic. But, you know, I think it still resonates with people just to this day, just because it's something that's so true and inside all of us, you know. You know, so, so we pay money to go see anyway, you know. We, 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 I think Tony Kushner said at one point, you know, the audiences basically pay to see us suffer, and that's, that's <laughs> part of our job, so that's what we do, you know. So what are you doing next? Uh, well, right now I'm in rehearsals for uh, Dial M for Murder uh, at Bucks County Playhouse. It's a, a famous uh, Hitchcock film, but we're doing the, the play that the, that the film was based on. So, lots of murder mysteries, you know, so it's a good time. Ooh, sounds good. Well, congratulations and good luck. Well, thank you very much. I love your glasses. Thank you. I have vertigo, so for the flashing lights. It's all good. It's all good. I love it. Take care. Thanks. I know, well, you, we both have been so busy. <laughs> Hello, here we are with... Joel Gray. <laughs> Steven Skybell. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... <laughs> that's all right. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> like, I take it two for the price of that's one. It, that's it, bargain basement. We, we go nowhere without each other. That is true. Well, it is true. <laughs> no, we, we go to the facility without each other. <laughs> oh, that's a relief. Yes, yeah. it is, right? <laughs> you took something, I mean, Fiddler on the Roof, which we all have seen like a gazillion times because it's in our DNA, I mean, especially if you're Jewish. And honest to Pete, we're all saying it's like we never saw Fiddler on the Roof before. What, I mean, the way you ended was so visceral and so simple that I still, it just like everyone was crying on the way during the intermission. That's, but I don't want to give it away. I'm no. very careful. No, I mean we're we're telling the story as we're we've been told it happened, and that hasn't changed. And I love your and of course Tavia, and you get to you get to give us the different take. Like instead of if I were a rich man, it was so interesting that instead of if I were a Roth child, I mean the, we're getting it pure because it's Yiddish. That's right. Well, Roth, if I were a Roth child, is from the Shalom Aleichem story, so the Yiddish translator borrowed that, and uh, Sheldon Harnick, the lyricist, approved it because of course one doesn't want to tweak too much the. Sheldon Harnick lyrics, which are perfect, but a little sprinkling of Yiddishism was uh, absolutely welcomed by our audience, and it just sort of tweaks everyone's experience of of a chestnut of a musical, of a the classic what Broadway. What did I hear? What did he say? What I say? What did he say? Chestnut? chestnut? No. What? Rothschild. <laughs> no. All yeah, right. Yeah. It just makes them say, "What did he say?" Uh, Anyway, but uh, but I do feel that the, the Yiddish takes something that everyone knows so well and just slightly puts it through a different prism. And so people are able to experience it in a new way that they perhaps haven't experienced before. And the way Yiddish comes across, too, is the, it, it, it makes you feel a certain way even without knowing what it is because there's such attitude to the Yiddish language. Yeah. Yes. Yes, there is. And he's a Yiddish speaker. I never spoke it well, or understood it. Well, y you fooled us all. all right. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Oh. You you choreographed more than what is all the you have done so much this. Oh, it's been great. It was a Will Merrily, we roll along roundabout, and superhero at second stage and La Traviata at the Met. So those were my that was my season. Uh, and for Lortel, it's Merrily or Superhero? Merrily, Merrily, yes. Because they were both so good. It's like, I see your name and I'm like, immediately know, oh, it's going to be good. Oh, thanks so much. So what inspires you? Uh, it depends on, you know, I try and take it from the text and the music and the story, so, and the actors. So. And isn't it, you got to do Merrily, which is a well-known, and then a brand new one, and then opera. Yeah, it was really thrilling. I mean, for me, Stephen Sondheim sitting there giggling at the stuff we were doing was 
like it was like the greatest thing in my life. I know you you put more you gave a, a little different literally spin to it. We tried, yeah, and he was very happy, so we were all happy. So what's next? Uh, almost famous. Yeah, that should be great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh, the woman of the hour. Hi, 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 Bill. Here we are with Renee Taylor. Oh my gosh, we all love your show because we all have done diets, and honestly, they were. It was so helpful. Thank you, thank you. It was wonderful to share it. What did you come up with the idea in the first place? Uh, actually, it was my husband's idea, and I said, oh, nobody will be interested. And he said, no, I'm on a diet. Everybody's going to be interested. And you've had an interesting life. You know, share it with people. So I said, okay, I wasn't expecting people to love it like they do. Yes, because it, it's getting extended. And is it coming back at all? Are you going to bring it back? We're playing in New Jersey, uh, and we're playing uh, in... Um, uh, East Hampton and uh, Connecticut, New Haven. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're playing all around Chicago, all over the country. My favorite bit was Marilyn Monroe with the grapes, where she goes, how many grapes did you eat? <laughs> That's so funny. And also, you were so gorgeous up there. You got to be in your lovely negligee in this gorgeous room. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, good luck and congratulations on, on your, all your success. And may it continue. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Did I ever? I laugh nonstop. Nonstop. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Hello. Here we are with... Tim Blake Nelson. Oh, wow, Socrates. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah, we were just reviewing it, actually. So how did you come up with Socrates? How did you realize it was so prescient for what's going on right now? Uh, I was fascinated by the character of Socrates uh, 30 years ago when I was studying classics in college. It was never my intention to write a play about right now, but events kind of collided with my interest in the character. And suddenly, uh, when I finally got around to writing this play, it had a relevance I never expected. And it's such a cast. It has all my favorite stage actors in it. Yes, it's a wonderful cast with Michael Stuhlbarg and Tego Bouger, David Aaron Baker, Bob Joy. It goes on and on. Uh, Miriam Hyman. It's a wonderful cast and a beautiful production directed by Doug Hughes. And Lee Wilcock for comic yes. relief. Yes, Lee Wilcock. Yes. So, how come he, I mean, he could have saved himself so many times and he just didn't. Doesn't that make you want to strangle your own character? Well, he... You have to be patient with your character. He wanted, to, he wanted to make a point. I'm not, I don't want to offend anyone when I say this, but... It's, it's kind of akin to Jesus being crucified. He was that important a figure. And in a sense, he died for the sins of Athens. <laughs> well put. Well, what's next? What are you writing on now? Uh, well, I also write and direct movies, and so I'm, the next one's going to be a movie. Oh, what movie? Eventually, I want to do a movie of Socrates. Ooh. And I still re with Michael. And I still remember your first play, The Gray Zone. Yes. So oh, thank you for remembering that. I really appreciate it. Yeah, that's why you've always been on my radio. Oh, thank you very much. Well, thank you and good to luck. You. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, Eva. Oh, Chin, set designer of Passover. Oh, hi. Oh, well, we just finished the Passover. Oh, who are you talking about, John? No, no, the Jewish holiday. Yes, of course. Okay, so hello, here we are. Uh, I'm Wilson Chin, I'm the set designer for Passover. I'm sorry, I gotta be honest, I did miss the play, so I didn't see it. So you can always see it on Amazon Prime, because we made a film version of it with Spike Lee. So you can see it anytime you want. Oh, I'm so excited! Yay, that's so good to know! Because there's so much out there, and some things just, we pass over because we... Just yeah, yeah, you can see it anytime you want, 3, 3 a.m. in your apartment. So what was the set design? What is the set design? What 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 what, is, what was the set design? Oh, it's a street corner. It's a riff on uh, Waiting for Godot, but with two black kids on a street corner. So it's got that kind of desolate Beckett-like Beckett landscape, 
Uh, well, instead of a tree, we have a street lamp. So, um, it, it, and uh, it, it's very, it's very abstract. You know, it's like a little isolated platform, kind of tilted and surrounded by sand, because um, they have to cross through the desert to get to the promised land. So they're surrounded by the desert. So what's next for you? Next, I'm doing Billy Porter's new play, uh, Primary Stages. It's called Untitled Sex Project. That should be fine. Be good. Yeah, yeah. You like it when they let you run amok and you can just use your imagination? I mean, absolutely. Other than revivals and stuff. Well, I love I love reinventing revivals as well. So. Well, good luck and congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks for that too. I'm so happy. Yes, go check it out. Yes. Raja Feather Kelly. Oh, that's you? That's me, that's me. Oh my gosh, it pretty hurts like a motherfucker. And uh, every time I look at choreography, there's your name. You've done like 12,000 things this year. So that's what you look like. This is what I look like. I'm Roger Brother Kelly. That show is amazing. I am working quite a bit, and I love choreographing. What were the other shows? Because I'm saying, I, I, in fact, when I was doing uh, the Critics, I kept saying, I put your name with like 12,000 things. I, I don't care what you ask him to do, but the, what were the other? Uh, I, I did the choreography for Fairview, which just won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama, which is amazing. Hurricane Diane. I did that as well. Uh, what else? I did Limpica over at Williamstown this summer. That was really amazing. You do these wonderful, hard-hitting satires that are just incredible. Fair of you. When we got to go on stage, it was so, like, wow. Yeah. It was a very visceral play. I think that that's what it was supposed to be. It felt like it kept turning. Once you thought it kind of settled into something, it switched into something else. And being able to be a part of, like, the choreography of the audience, like, how do they get up? What do they do? Where do they stand? was really... Really exciting. And the same thing, I was a pretty motherfucker. It's this lovely little fairy tale, and then the end comes a punchline. Yeah, uh, and it's it's kind of like hits you in the face, and you get very joyous. You have a moment of being really, really joyful and excited, and then it kind of, like you say, it hits you in the gut. It gets cathartic. And Hurricane Diana, all, all these things have incredible punchlines to them. I mean, that one is like, you know, that one woman, she was like not going to give up on her iron bench. Yes, yes, she wanted her wrought iron accent bench, and, and what was exciting, and also Becca being like this god. Like, how are you a god on stage, and you're making all these things happen? That kind of magic I'm really attracted to. So what are you doing now? What other 12,000 things are you doing next? Um, I am currently doing another show at, at Playwrights Horizons called A Strange Loop, which everyone should see. It's going to be amazing. It's by Michael R. Jackson, directed by Stephen Brackett. I'm doing the choreography for that, and I'm having a blast. And Fairview's coming back, so if you didn't get punched in the gut the first time, you can do it again at Theater for a New Audience all through June. I've been telling people, you missed it, you, you got a chance. Yeah, you got to get back to see it. You just have to. Congratulations, it really is a pleasure to meet you because you know, it's amazing. I'm like, wow, who is this? Perfect timing. Okay, um, so Lucy Lortel is going to be on May 3rd, uh, virtually at 7 o'clock, and Strange Loop got nominated. So anyway, enjoy, and next show will be May 9th with the Zoom gang. Bye. <laughs>